Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Main Scoop. I'm Daniel Newman, your host, joined by Mr. Greg Locko. Greg, we're back today. Delighted to be back. Love doing The Main Scoop with you. It's good to be here. It's good to be celebrating today. You want to tell everyone what we're going to be celebrating? Hey, you know, you may have noticed that we're not referencing someone that's going to be joining us, but we got a bunch of people from the ecosystem joining us because the mainframe is all about the people. It is all about the people. And I believe, Greg, that we are celebrating now six decades, Yep. 60 years of the mainframe. That's that's a long time that this very, very important technology has been powering industries and still to this date, powering many industries. Thriving. Thriving. So let me ask you a question as somebody that you know spends a little bit of time focused on this particular business space. Why do you think this particular technology has been so important and remains so relevant for so long? So let's not listen to just me. Let's hear from the ecosystem. We could talk about that. Let's go to the ecosystem. Uh, the mainframe is massive. There will never be a shortage of things to learn and you can always expand on your knowledge. The mainframe is the foundation on which the healthcare industry runs. The mainframe is a powerhouse of computational might, driving critical operations with efficiency and reliability. If you only know one thing about the mainframe, you should know it's a transactional monster. The, the mainframe is forever and it's so irreplaceable. There is nothing that can do what the mainframe can do as cheap as it can be done. Um, as efficient as it can be done. The mainframe is just forever. It's, it's only going to get better and it's never going anywhere. The mainframe is one of the most solid asset classes of all the compute asset classes. The mainframe is secure and everywhere. Look, everyone wants to feel like what they want on matters and the mainframe just does. Uh, it's a great industry to be in um, and it's undoubtedly entwined in our society. The mainframe is the main place we frame the future. Wow, so the community's loving it. Yeah, I, you know, start from the end and work back. I love that the person used the word frame. It frames the future. It's powerful, it's resilient, it's lasting. And it's really massive. Good stuff. It's massive. Somebody said it's massive. And of course, over the years, it actually Huge. has gotten quite a bit smaller. Yeah, it's physically gotten smaller so that it could fit in an industry standard rack. It's uh, way more efficient and effective because of that continuous investment and evolution. So at the same time, it both got smaller in stature or space that it took out, but the power and the capability is massive. But it hasn't gotten any less important. In fact, you could argue, well, you know, naysayers might wanna, wanna, wanna say everything's gonna go cloud or this or that. The industry, whether it's the financial services world, healthcare systems, they've realized that there is no other way to do this. So Greg, let me ask you a question. What do you love about the mainframe? The people. The people. I, I mean, it, it's the thing that kept bringing me back. The technology is fabulous. I, I mean, nothing against that. The power, the strength, the resiliency, what it does for businesses around the world. But the thing that really makes this work, the thing that has driven it to new heights it's the people, the energy and enthusiasm around the platform and what they're doing with it in the world. But what about you? What do you think? What, I mean, you're, you're broad industry analyst. We have this opportunity with the main scoop. We do talk about broad topics, but we always bring it back to the mainframe. What have you come to love about the mainframe? Look, the, the shift from mainframe to modernization is something that we often talk about on the show, right? We talk about hybrid architectures and then we talk about cloud architectures. And the thing I love is that as you see gradual transformations that are going on in business, the mainframe has really remained and been rooted as part of the core of so many different businesses for its reliability, for its scalability, for its the secure nature that it has. And then of course, its, its ability to stay modern. You know, we've seen implementations of AI at scale. It's funny that it seems like so many want to say it's A or B, but I feel like it's A and B. Meaning, Even, it's, even the it's, way you started that, you started to say it's the shift from to, it's with. It's not. It's, it's modernization with. with the mainframe connecting to those other technologies. Yeah, and it's really staying that way. And as I've even spent more time with you and I've spent more time with other partners in the ecosystem, those celebrating this 60 years, I've learned so much more and I've seen so much more about why this technology has such a bright future, but hey, why don't we ask the uh, ask some of our friends out in the ecosystem what they think? Absolutely. What do you all think out there? What I love about the mainframe is there's lots of support for new people like me, and I get to help maintain and develop software that is going to affect millions of people. 
I mean, mainframes are just cool. They're these ultra powerful machines that make so much of modern life possible. The mainframe has provided a foundational framework that all other business technologies have been built upon. Coding for a mainframe is your opportunity to have a contribution to human history because uh, the code persistent for many, many years. I love the opportunity. That's the key. Uh, I started at the very bottom of the mainframe chain. That was mopping floors and hanging tapes. And now I am privileged to be part of a program that teaches our next generation of mainframers. My favorite thing about the mainframe is really two favorite things about the mainframe. But the first one is that I think you'd be hard pressed to find a better example in tech of the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, there's a reason why, despite the fact that some people have been saying the mainframe is somehow perpetually in a cycle of maybe almost disappearing for years, it has not disappeared and it is not likely to disappear anytime in the near future. I mean, this has been powering some of the biggest systems in the world since before the Beatles came stateside. That brings me to my second favorite thing about the mainframe and a huge chunk of why I'm really here. Before I understood the tech, I had the wonderful opportunity to meet some of the people. And mainframers, in my opinion, are an awesome and welcoming group of people. The mainframe has provided an enduring platform that underpins how we live and how we operate today. As we look forward, what we see from the mainframe is that continuing with new functionality, powering a hybrid cloud model, and delivering on the promise of AI. I think as you look at the last 60 years, you see key indicators that are gonna mean there's a lot to come from this platform. So we shouldn't be looking backwards, we should certainly be in looking forwards. When it comes to big data, nothing gets compared with IBM's processing power. And that's exactly why, like almost 95% of world's top banks still rely on mainframe technology for their daily transactions. And that's exactly what I love about mainframe. It's original. It's a legacy system with high credibility, which still provides solution that endures and build the future generation a better place. And I am glad to be part of it too. Mainframe is really reliable, powerful and secure. It can handle many transactions and data at the same time. As you all know, mainframe has been the backbone of many industries and continue to adapt and innovate to meet the changing demand of the digital world. Cheers to 60 years of outstanding achievement and too many more to come. I love mainframe because it always surprises me. Toujours, there is something to learn about the mainframe, something that makes a difference in our world. The mainframe is a good friend, especially for those who have to process huge amounts of data. I love the mainframe because it's fun. I get to learn new things every day. Not only that, the mainframe community is very supportive and enjoyable to work with. So what I heard there, we're back to the people. It's about the community. It, I, I mean, usually when somebody says it's cool or talks about the area they're in the cool, you go, yeah, yeah, of course you think that. But what is cool is the community with the longevity. The idea that the people that I worked with were the founders around this platform and they invested in me so that I could learn. And now my generation wants to pay it forward yet again. A platform with this staying power, this capability over this period of time is unprecedented. That is cool. Yeah, it's interesting to watch some of those young technology leaders yeah. talking about, well, first of all, the word cool, I think was said more than several times. Yeah. Um, and then also, of course, talking about you know building on on, on developing on code and, mm -hmm. and iterating on code and creating something that has staying power. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk business value. Sure. You know, in the end, right? We always say you don't buy technology for technology's sake; you buy technology for business sake. And if you think about uh, this particular technology, it has been at the core 
of business value. It's, you know, I mentioned earlier, I said reliable, scalable, secure. Mm -hmm. These are just a few, uh, resilient. Um, you know, in the end, what's a world look like if all of a sudden uh, mainframes were no longer here? I shudder to think, candidly. I mean, when you talk about a platform that has had staying power, I think people think about stability or being static or a consistent return. But this has been a platform that's continued to give a return on investment that far exceeds any other platform. I mean, the, the heavy lifting power it does in businesses and the cost per compute is paled compared to anything else. So forget about anybody's preferences or biases of the technologies that they've worked in. A world without mainframe would be a heck of a lot more expensive for IT it would be much less resilient and it would require a heck of a lot more people power to keep all this working and running in today's society. I won't say it couldn't be done, but it wouldn't be done nearly as efficiently or nearly as well. Business often has a way, Greg, of telling when there's a better way. And the fact that- When they think there's a better way. When they think, but what I'm saying is if, if it was a sure thing, if there was, if it was a sure thing that they could move into another platform and get better results, they would have done it. I'm Agreed. telling you, Agreed. the reason they haven't done it is because this is still one of the most efficient, most powerful, scalable, secure platforms on the planet. And it's, if, not, it's not saying it's the right platform for everything, no. which is why there's been client server computing and there's cloud and there, there's mobile computing. There's, there's platforms that are really good for certain parts of IT and the workload, but the stuff that has stayed on mainframe is because that is the best place for it to be. Well, you look at like transaction processing and if all of a mm -hmm. sudden that was taken away. I mean, just imagine if uh, some force came on and suddenly the mainframe tomorrow vanished from the world. A magic wand. A magic Oof. wand came. What do you think our friends, what do you think our community would think happens? What would happen if suddenly Google, Meta, Facebook, X, Twitter, you name it, stopped working? Surely, definitely some inconvenience. For example, I couldn't watch my favorite cat videos. And yes, also some more serious inconvenience than that. But still, the world wouldn't stop. On the contrary, if all mainframes would suddenly stop working, the world economy would stop. No buying, selling basic goods, no booking travel, no insurance claims, no withdrawing your money from the bank. Frankly, what would be the consequences of all this collapse? I don't like to think about it. What you would have is a deluge, um, a great flood of loss of functionality. You know, I've often referred to the mainframe as Noah's architectures as the platform for the ages that was designed to survive and help us survive and move forward. Um, so it's kind of like if the people in Noah's Ark suddenly didn't have a boat anymore. So if a mysterious force wiped out Earth's, all the Earth's mainframes, what would happen? Most transaction processing, whether from credit cards or banks to motor vehicle bureaus to social security to the IRS, maybe that's a good thing, would actually grind to a halt. It's the actual workhorse of what's going on out there in high volume transactions and payment processing and things like that. And even computational is out there too. So probably 70% of the world's workloads would stop working. And the consequences of that would bring mankind to a standstill. What comes to mind would be a mainframe zombie apocalypse. But on a serious note, I think what we would experience would be significant financial services disruption. Government operations would halt around the world. Airlines and transportations would go into a chaotic you know, mode of operation. Healthcare systems would be strained. Retail and supply chains may collapse. Data and security and privacy risk would emerge all over the place. And this would have significant economic impact. So I hope that mysterious force never comes to play because we will have real issues. Hey, so for me, I'm more of a dog person than a cat person. Although, you know, don't write in your cards and letters. I like Maine Coons and I like Scottish Folds, go Taylor Swift. But yeah, I, I, I think what they're expressing here is the recognition of the different types of workloads and what they mean to us in a real world on an everyday. Everyday interaction. Noah's Ark 
architecture. Yeah, so I like that one. That kind of that kind of caught my attention a little bit. But I think it is the idea that certain things that we've come to know and expect to just work. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what the mainframe is really really good at. It's like the thing you never expect to walk into a store and try to buy something and find out that you can't. Right. That a transaction cannot be processed. I mean, you think about like credit card transactions. I mean, you don't want to look at your bank account and have it be like, well, you know, you, you, you can't look right now. We don't have any idea how much money you have. So, so what do you think are <laughs> the biggest milestones? Do you have a milestone or a, a something that's happened with innovation or invention in the mainframe over the years, Greg, that just really stands out to you? For me, the biggest thing was opening up the platform, right? I mean, uh, it, it probably started first technologically with the idea that IBM created a platform where you could bring your programs forward. You didn't have to rewrite them every time you got a new computer. Think about that, if you, if you got a new iPad or tablet and all of a sudden you had to rewrite all the software, not efficient. So, so that was huge, but when you have a closed system, I think, you, you get constrained, you kind of say, well, I already have a spreadsheet, I already have something, it's good enough, and you stagnate, you don't innovate. You may provide different functions, but you don't necessarily evolve and iterate. And then in the late 60s, when it opened up and it spawned this whole partner ecosystem where others could develop software for it, and now you had competition for better programming or middleware technologies, you know, everybody was trying to provide more value or greater value than, than the next. I think that's really what spurred it forward. Yeah, I definitely love watching how, as it, as it modernizes, that it, it's embracing the new parallel or adjacent technologies. Mm -hmm. So whether that's been hybrid architectures. And that's a different level of open. I, I was talking yeah. fundamentally yeah. of just having not all the software provided by one vendor, right? Then you go forward yeah. 20, 30 years and uh, you get Linux on the platform and then you start opening up APIs, you get hybrid workloads and connecting yeah. with cloud workloads. It, yeah. it really just keeps accelerating and giving a greater return on it. Yeah, value. and just the last few years, even seeing the way AI and the yep. mainframe have begun to work together so closely. But uh, what do you think our, what do you think all of our friends in the community are saying about uh, you know, about what they uh, consider to be the greatest advancements of the mainframe. Well, talking about the greatest advance in mainframe technology is almost like picking a favorite amongst your children. There's been so much from advanced security features uh, like cryptography at scale, all the way to uh, innovations in uh, uh, computer language. Uh, it's been a lot of pioneering uh, technology that has been introduced by the mainframe. But I think I would stay with uh, or stick to virtualization. Uh, virtualization uh, was there first. Uh, it enabled us to separate uh, initially hardware from software, uh, enabled uh, portability, uh, enabled scale uh, that led all the way to infrastructure as a service and the cloud paradigms that we have today. So uh, I think I would go back to the pioneering days of virtualization on the mainframe. And I think this has been one of the most uh, remarkable uh, technologies that has started uh, in the platform. What I would say the um, hybrid cloud strategy is one of the greatest advance because uh, brings um, brings the scalability, brings the serviceability, brings the reliability of the mainframes and both also brings the capability to, uh, to adapt and to integrate in this, uh, this cloud world, in this cloud modernization that comes at is, 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 our, is in our lives as well. You know, there have been so many important advances every year, every decade, uh, and that continues, you know, right now. Uh, you see, you know, with the Telem chip, with the, uh, the AI, with the quantum relevance, uh, with the increasing cloud relevance. And yet, you know, each of these harkens back to earlier innovations, earlier ideas, earlier aspirations. Uh, certainly the cloud is, is a manifestation of really early ideas of computing as a utility and not as an individual box. You know, and, and what does this all have in common? Well, there's one word. And it's a word that was not part of the original System 360 design, but it was aspirationally in the hearts and minds of people and came out explicitly in the 1970s. And that word is virtualization. Well, this one doesn't take a lot of thinking. It's actually a virtualization. 
the ability to run multiple workloads on the same piece of hardware. And with virtualization, we're now able to optimize the, the usage of mainframes. So good to see so many of the alumni from the main scoop. Yeah. Uh, chiming in here. I agree. You know, it's the talent in the community seem to really find a way to resonate throughout this Luminary. episode. Yeah. Yeah, but when you listen to just the answers, whether it's been, what are the best innovations? Or, you know, what would the world look like without? You know, you just kind of listen to all of them and they talk about the power of community, being around and working with people that are, that are innovators and people that love What is it for you? What do you think is the biggest technological advancement on the platform? Well, what I said before is I think it think it has more to do with the acceptance of the new open standards, not what you were talking about. Sure. You know, kind of you kind of came up with my answer when I answered, and then you came back with it, and you were like, you know, I'm watching the way it's modernizing to address what some people are kind of looking from outside the in, the mainframe era mm -hmm. as these are the future. I think it's an and, and what I've really come away from having spent more and more time in this business and around this business, Greg, is that it's not or, it's and. I, and. As I as I listened to the ecosystem talk, I was thinking about, wow, yeah, I agree, virtualization, I agree, parallel sysplex was huge, and databases and transaction processing. But I really realized the single biggest innovation isn't one of them, it's all of them. It's the idea that this platform has had continued and ongoing innovation. So the, the single biggest innovation is realizing what this platform's doing, how important it is to the world, and not stopping, not resting on its laurels, to continue to innovate ahead of the needs of the businesses and all the institutions that are relying on the platform. When you have a technology that's as fundamentally important to society as the mainframe, and then you have as I was sort of alluding to earlier, a community of people that yep. love being part of it, you get a byproduct, which is, is often innovation and mm -hmm. continuous improvement. And that's what we've got here. And of course, you know, you, you get people that you can just tell, Greg, they're just so proud to be in this business. There is pride for sure, but it's a life's work. It's a passion. It's an energy and enthusiasm. That's what you feel. And it's infectious in a good way. Well, let's find out what they're most proud of about being part of this industry. What makes me most proud of being a member of the community, frankly, is the community itself. I've uh, spent uh, many years of my professional life uh, as a mainframer, uh, but it's been I've been away for a while. I've been in different areas of the business, and I've been even a little bit outside of technology now for the last couple of years, but I'm still here. I'm still a mainframe at, at heart, and I still have a chance to celebrate a great milestone and an anniversary together with you all. So I think that's what we should be all most proud of. We must be proud of each other and our camaraderie. I'm just so proud of each one of the people I've gotten to know, learn from, and uh, take the journey with. And so I'm proud of the people of the mainframe above all. I have to say the mainframe community is, is forward thinking and adaptable. Especially in, in the last decade, we've seen the cloud technology take a more prominent place in, in the business ecosystem. However, the cloud technology is not a total disruptor to, um, to how businesses run their workloads. And the mainframe community found ways to, to basically emphasize its own strengths and collaborate where it made sense with the cloud technology in order to fundamentally serve the client at the end of the day. And, and this approach of, of driving with openness, of driving with collaboration, I think made the mainframe ecosystem more relevant and, and helped the, the business ecosystem evolve faster and take advantage of innovation at a faster pace. There's the tight knit across all the involved players, from the designers, developers, and support teams, our business partners and consultants, and IBM champions, to most importantly, our customers, who are the inspiration for all we do, and uh, who are always the most important component in the mainframe ecosystem. Speaking of IBM champions, Mr. IBM champion, I think I saw Post uh, with your 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 picture on it. Yeah, I'm the uh, I'm the first ever executive influencer IBM champion for the Z community, which it's all about 
the community. And as I listened to the answers, it struck me that while I'm extremely proud of this community for what they've done, for what they've delivered, for what they've put in the world, I'm so much more proud of who they are. And that's what kept bringing me back. Like some others that you heard from, I've been in and out of this community, but it's the people that always drew me back. The commitment, the energy, the enthusiasm, it is a fabulous place in the IT market to make your career. And, uh, you know, I couldn't do it without all these people. Yeah, you're, you're kind of, you're like gushing a little bit. That's, it's good to see I'm that. Extremely proud of this ecosystem. So, so part of any, you know, the continuation of any successful industry comes back to bringing fresh new talent to yep. it. What do you think is the draw for the younger community to want to join and become part of this, this mainframe space? It's, it's the people. It's, it is absolutely unique here. The idea that people have had their life's work and passion around this, and they want to ensure that this is here for many years into the future. So the people are very giving of their knowledge and make that investment. But let's, that's, that's from the other side. Let's hear from those folks that are newer to the community what they think. Ever since my understanding of a mainframe expanded beyond an idea of a big computer that runs your credit card transactions, I had a sneaking suspicion that I was going to be very happy in this space. And I'm looking forward to potentially having quite a long career here, even though I am just at the very beginning. Because right now, my passion is running very high for this field. And that's not something I can say about very many things. Uh, when I was in college, uh, I didn't hear anything about the mainframe. Uh, one thing that I would like to, to say is uh, it would be a very good opportunity uh, for people that are in the, that are in the college to be introduced uh, about the mainframe uh, and the technology that mainframe use uh, so uh, they can be their future. So far, I've really enjoyed learning about mainframe and being able to collaborate with other mainframers and hopefully I'm able to do it for years to come. I'm less than a year into my mainframe career. And the thing that attracted me to this industry to begin with is I think the reason why so many businesses stick with the mainframe. It's reliable uh, in a world that feels more turbulent than ever. The mainframe feels like a rock of stability. Uh, and I know that it's going to be a dependable platform and a dependable career for many years to come. You could see a lot of excitement and enthusiasm in those young up and coming mainframers, Greg. I, I, I sensed some that feel that this could be, it's not a stopping point, it's a starting point. Yeah. And that a career can be built. And, and that's really, really great to hear because this industry is going to need young, fresh, enthusiastic talent to continue to bring innovation to what I think will be a very long and important future that this technology still has. I think that's unique. I think usually you hear about people talking about a particular database or uh, software technology, whereas when you're talking about the mainframe, you're talking about an entire platform and everything it involves, whether it be the applications working, in a business, whether it be middleware, whether it be the hardware, and folks can do a lot of different things across that career. And I think that's what keeps it exciting and challenging for them. Yeah, it's important. So, you know, uh, this is an ever-changing space, Greg. And while- Constantly so evolving, for sure. This is an ever-changing and constantly evolving space, Greg. <laughs> and by the way, part of what makes you know, any technology so important is that it has its its fair amount of stability mm -hmm. with a constant dose of, of, of iteration and innovation. You know, you want a platform that's running every financial services transaction, almost every single one, to be really stable, reliable, dependable, and maybe mm -hmm. not be changing too, too quickly. At the same time, though, you want to know that whether it's advancing the most cost efficient ways to do something, the most sustainable ways to do something, or the most secure ways to do something, that it's it's addressing that. 
all in real time. So yeah, you got that challenge of kind of wanting to constantly modernize and, and constantly at the same time, give people that real stability that you want to know that your tech is just going to work. So let's put ourselves on the spot for a minute. All right. Give me the three words that come to mind for you when I say mainframe. I'm, I'm going to use four. Of course you are. Because when I pick the first three, there's overlap in there. So for sure, it's longevity. And then tied to that, I think about durability and security. But most important to me, and we heard it from all the people out there in the ecosystem, the most important thing, if I were to describe the platform, is its humanity. So since you got four, I'm going to keep the, 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 the playing field level and I'm going to give you two. You're such a sharer. I am such a sharer. I should open up more. So I'm going to use one that a lot of people would probably expect, and that's scalable. Mm -hmm. The platform is incredibly scalable. And I'm going to use one that maybe doesn't quite match your humanity, but it does play a little bit more in the, in the ethers of, of, of bigger thinking, and that's integrity. When you do as many transactions on a day, -to -day, day in and day out basis as a mainframe does, the fact that it almost never gets it wrong. The integrity of the system is pretty incredible. I think it does tie to the humanity in it. It's the integrity of the system and the people that are running the most important workloads in the world. Well, I don't know by this point in the show, Greg, if you could guess, but we gave our, you gave your six and I gave my zero so that we could have a chance to both give three. But uh, let's hear what the community had to say about the three words that they would use to describe the mainframe. Absolutely. Uh, three words, the mainframe, I'd say um, versatile. Um, this bit of kit is able to run um, ZOS or Linux. It can be used in aviation or banking. You know, it's very, very versatile. Um, powerhouse, um, this machine can compute an unfathomable amount of data. Uh, has an immeasurable yield of transactions per second. But I'd also say my last word is oxymoronic. It's the most modern piece of legacy hardware in the entire IT industry. Powerful, efficient, and reliable. Vital, unbreakable, ingenious. Powerful, efficient, and indispensable. Secure, reliable, and fun. Simply put, it's fast, it's reliable, and it's secure. Profound definitive and human. Well, Greg, <laughs> you weren't the only one that found the word human. So you got another word? Or are you going to just uh, chalk it up to the fact that you got it and, and someone else did that you were really onto something there? No, I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, so the other thing we heard is reliable. And what else is reliable? You can count on more episodes of the main scoop. And with that... We do have to say thank you to everyone for tuning in to this special 60th anniversary edition of The Mainframe here on The Main Scoop. I'm Daniel Newman, joined by my friend and co-host, Mr. Greg Locko. We appreciate you tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of the episodes of this show. But we've got to say goodbye for now. We'll see you all later. <laughs>